5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is best. Their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. We talked earlier about some of the methods to make sure that stuff doesn't enter Australia, which is not meant to enter Australia. For example, we've got border control, where we sort of make sure that different types of plant products and animal products and plants don't enter Australia. And so here we have lots of stuff which has been collected before it can enter Australia. We've got these restricted zones, such as with the Queensland fruit fly. So it's infected Queensland, but we want to make sure it doesn't enter South Australia. Therefore, we have these restricted zones. And we also have quality control measures. So for example, if we have an import, that means we bring items in from, let's say, New Zealand, so it's from outside Australia. We want to make sure that there's a chance of infection, chance of this being diseased is as small as possible. So we tell the New Zealand farmers to make sure that they use different types of pesticides and different types of control me measures to make sure that there's no disease on their actual products. That's quality control, right? So we also do that as well. All these measures try to minimize the risk of disease entering Australia. So whilst we can minimize it, we can't make it not be there entirely, right? Minimize as possible, but there's still going to be some chance that some of them will enter Australia because it's impossible to completely seal off the borders. So whilst the quarantine is effective, it's not completely 100% foolproof. There's always going to be some spread because it's hard to control everything unless we completely close our borders to airplanes and cargo ships and everything else. So what we have to do in this video is cover this dot point. Students will process and analyze information from secondary sources to evaluate the effectiveness of quarantine in preventing the spread of plants and animal diseases into Australia or across regions of Australia. So we have to talk about um, either into Australia, so this is from overseas into Australia, or across regions of Australia. We have to talk about the effectiveness. How effective have we, have we have been with this quarantine to make sure that disease doesn't spread? And the, the verb is evaluate, so it's a high order of verbs, so we have to know some detail. So first I'll give an example, the foot and mouth disease. Now this foot and mouth disease affects sheep and cattle. Sheep and cattle, as you can see here, this is the foot and mouth disease. You're going to get these blisters all over your, your animals. And that basically means any meat products that come from these sheep or cattle can't be eaten. Right? So all that sheep and cattle that would be infected would have to be killed because we can't eat the meat that is infected with foot and mouth disease. Now, there have been outbreaks in many parts of Europe, especially in 2001, when there was an outbreak in parts of England or Britain. And this is, once it happened in Britain, it spread to lots of other parts of Europe and around the world. But Australia remains disease-free. So you can see it's been, quarantine has been quite effective because it hasn't spread to Australia. And the reason why I go over now, the reason why is because of quarantine measures. So for example, once we've found, found out there's been an infection, we ban all products from the infected areas. So we, we weren't importing any animal products from Britain after 2001 to make sure that they don't cross the border. We also made sure that any passengers which came from the infected areas were processed. So we checked them to make sure they didn't have any symptoms, they didn't have any meat products on them, anything else. So we checked every passenger that came from these infected areas to make sure that they, we, they wouldn't spread the disease unknowingly into Australia. What we also did, we checked the mail of people that, from the, the mail that came from these infected areas, usually also to make sure that obviously no items were put that weren't meant to be there, but also, for example, for possibility of you know, soil contamination or other contamination products which might be in the mail. So we checked all the mail. And we had our normal quarantine measures, which we mentioned in the first video, that um, you know, prohibited items don't enter, etc., etc. So all these extra initiatives made sure that the foot and mouth disease stayed out of Australia. Right? It was infected lots of other places, but didn't affect Australia. Here's an example where our our quarantine measures have been quite effective. Right, We have managed to keep foot and mouth disease away from Australia. And if it were in Australia, it would be a major problem. Now, if something does happen, if, if a disease does spread into Australia, there's also procedures in place, right? So these procedures are in place to make sure that if something happens in Australia, that we can actually deal with it as well. For example, all animals are tagged. But by tagged, I mean that they are, we know where they come from. The tag will say where they came from. And that's good because if we do have, if we find that, for example, if we have one, um, let's say, a cattle, which we 
bring to a slaughterhouse somewhere else. So we this cattle, this purple thing is meant to be cattle. We bring it to a slaughterhouse. If this cattle is detected to be infected at the slaughterhouse, so somewhere completely different, right? it has a disease and they've detected it here. Because of that tag, they will know where it came from. So they will know, okay, it came from here. And then what they can do is they can try to eliminate the problem where it probably came from, where the infected area. So that's why these tags are in place. Also, animals are quarantined if they are found to be infected or killed. In many cases, they're killed. This is also something that we have in place to make sure it doesn't spread to any further location. There's decontamination of infected areas. What that means is, again, if this area was found to be infected, what will happen is there will be pesticides, there will be lots of burning of things which might be infected, just to make sure that any type of disease which is there is killed. We will establish disease-free zones like we did with the, the Queensland fly, which we'll talk about soon as well. But these disease-free zones make sure that disease stays out of these zones. There's special measures in place, such as fines and border control, to make sure they don't enter these pockets of Australia that remain disease-free. And the observation of animals. If, for example, we find that one animal might be infected, one type of animal, let's say a pig or a horse, and all pigs and horses would be looked at, observed to make sure that if they have symptoms, we can detect it quite early and then remove them if it's if they've been detected to have this problem, this disease. As these are these are measures in place that if a disease does spread, that we can get on top of it quickly, that we can remove it quickly again. Now, an example of this is the equine flu in 2007. So this has managed to get past our quarantine measures, this flu. And what it does, it affects horses all over Queensland and New South Wales. So as soon as it, as it happened in 2007, a lot of horses in Queensland, New South Wales, were infected. Now we want to make sure we want to make sure it doesn't spread any f other place, and we want to make sure that the infected horses are isolated. So what we did is we put all the horses which were infected into quarantine, which means they weren't allowed to leave at all. These, these are infected horses. We had vaccines for horses which might be infected. So we looked at all the horses in the area and gave them vaccines for that certain type of equine flu, so that the chance of them getting it would be low, lower than as well. We had events being called off. So, for example, horse races, where usually lots of horses meet, were called off to make sure it doesn't spread that way. We had these no-go zones. No, no, no go zones. So, you can see here, it says equine flu alert. Horses must not leave purple zone. So, these zones would be zones they couldn't pass, especially if they might be in an infected area. We had lots of observation happening. So, all horses were observed for symptoms. We had the decontamination, so any area which was found to have lots of decontaminated, uh, lots of infected horses was decontaminated by burning things which might be infected by using pesticides and, and et cetera, et cetera. And we had awareness campaigns. So awareness campaigns means we tell people that there's a flu and we don't want it to spread. Okay? So all these measures were in place. And whilst the quarantine did come to Australia, uh, sorry, the flu came to Australia, by 2008, so one year later, there were no more signs of the flu. They were completely gone. This would have wiped out a lot of horses, but because of our effective measures, that once they did come to Australia, we had these, this backup plan, we managed to make sure it doesn't spread any further. Now, this is an example of an animal disease. An example of a plant disease within Australia is the Pyloxera. Now, what this does is infects grapevine leaves. These are the grapevines. Grapevine are the trees which grow grapes. And the grapevine leaves are obviously the tree's leaves. So you can see here these little bulbs all over the place are signs of pyloxera infection. And this pyloxera will basically destroy the crop. So if they are infected, that means they can say goodbye to their crop. It's, it's gone. So we want to make sure that this doesn't spread from areas that it's infected. So we have areas that are considered to be infected zones. So you can't see this uh, map quite clearly, but just you can see here these red here and this red here, which is parts of New South Wales, New South Wales again, and I think parts of Queensland as well. These are infected with pyloxera, and we want to make sure that they don't go into Victoria and parts of South Australia because these are our wine-producing areas. And so you can see here the green area and the Green area is a disease-free zone. So these zones have no disease at the moment. And the light, sort of orangey parts are the risk zones, which means we haven't detected any infection yet, but they might be there soon. 
So we have these different types of zones to make sure we know which places are infected and how we can, what we can do about it as well once we've dis discovered which parts are infected. So what we can do is we can restrict the movement of grape wines. So for example, if we have grape wines, which are these trees that come from here, the infected areas, they are not allowed to be moved into anything else but the infected areas. So they, they are not allowed to be moved to the unaffected areas. And so restriction of the movement and also the movement of the materials associated with the production of grapes from the infected. So for example, the, the tractors, the machine machinery used, soil used, anything that's associated with the production of grapes is also not allowed to leave the infected area and be put into the non-infected area. So more or less what we're doing is we're trying to keep all the grapevines which are infected and all the material which is used to, to treat these grapevines inside the infected area. They're not allowed to leave the infected area because otherwise there'd be a risk of infecting the uninfected areas. And at the moment, it's doing quite well. We're, we're keeping the actual Pyloxera infection in these infested areas and these disease-free zones are remaining disease-free. So again, another example of how it's actually quite effective. Our quarantine measures are quite effective. I'll go over the top one again. It says, from second source to evaluate the effectiveness of quarantine in preventing the spread of plant and animal diseases in Australia uh, or across the regions of Australia. So we need to have an example of a plant and animal disease. I covered some in this video. And what you need to do is you need to evaluate. It's not just say it's been good, but say, you know, well, overall, we try to make sure it doesn't enter Australia. Right? This is the first part. You can give the example of the foot and mouth disease, which is what happens that we make sure it doesn't actually enter Australia in the first place. We're quite effective at doing that. We've managed to prevent that from entering Australia. But then you should also have the example of what happens if it does enter. Now, we have a backup plan, right? We've got these different backup plans. We tag our animals. We make sure we have these disease-free zones. We decontaminate any infected areas. This happens if it actually does mention enter Australia. And then you can talk about the equine flu, for example, that happened in 2007 with horses or the pyloxera infection, and what we did to make sure it doesn't spread any further. Right? So we were quite effective at keeping it isolated. Equine flu was not a problem. We managed to have these different parts that we managed to do. Vaccines, no-go zones, etc., et which means after a year it was already gone as well. So what you should know for this top point is what measures do we have in place? Are they effective? Do we have backup plans if something does spread? And overall, you know, how good is our quarantine um, in Australia. It's quite good. It's not perfect, but quite good on this. But you would need to put that into a question or into an answer. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.